Hello again. Two extremely important cases that in fact changed the law of the sea. The impact of both these cases are still felt today, although the cases have happened virtually more than 100 years ago. One is Vakit Habana connected to US, the other one is uh, the rather famous Lotus case connected to France and Turkey. So let's check one case after the other. The first one is the Paquit Habana case and this is connected to the Spanish war with the uh, US in 1898. We'll discuss the story later but let's discuss the decision by the Supreme Court first time. The case decided at uh, 1900 at the turn of the century, 20th century. Uh, there were two boats in or two fishing boats involved. One was Paquit Habana and second one was Lula. Both uh, uh, boats belonging to Cuba at that time under the Spanish Empire. So, uh, yeah, it's a landmark decision, meaning a decision that changed everything before that, connected to the topic. So, in this particular case, the Supreme Court of US stated emphatically that customary international law is integrated with the US law and therefore customary international law directly applies to the US law and yes binding on curse cases heard in the USA so it's a huge step in the history of uh, United States law and the step was taken in this particular case um, this is what the Supreme Court stated international law is part of our law so that's a complete game changer for law right to accept that you know the law is not just locally made and international law is also to be taken as a key part and component of the law so the supreme court of us made it in 1900 in this particular case that's why the case is important and not just uh, that supreme court went on further in this particular case you know uh, court of USA or any court of USA has to consider the customs that are you know practiced commonly in the civilized nations and not just that look at it jurists commentators their comments their opinions also should be taken into account when dealing with law when giving decisions in the cases uh, you know here forth coming up in the US law as I told you, right, not just the customs, but the opinions of the jurists also to be considered. So it's a landmark decision which caused immense change to the, you know, the United States. At that time, a young nation, only about 100 years old. So for a young independent nation to accept that uh, international law as a key part of the law is a huge step. And it's this uh, step that this particular case uh, is famous for for taking okay let's get to the story the story happened in the spanish war with the u.s or u.s spanish war uh, in at the turn of the century at 1898 by that time spain was still an empire spain held lots of territory in many many parts of the world and i think you might remember that spain was the first country to land in the united states officially uh, columbus and then others so uh, then u.s became a free nation and thereafter they bought some territory from um you know um spain to create the modern usa this big large parts of uh, u.s was bought from uh, you know under contract right from spanish but then there were islands and other parts of uh, um, you know the world that uh, spain still held control of Cuba was one of them, but anyway, uh, the uh, you know the relationship between between these two nations kind of went bad, and uh, it finally culminated in United States uh, declaring war against Spain, uh, the Spanish Empire. So when this is going on, there were two fishing boats <coughs> at sea. One was Paquita Habana and Lola. They left Cuba and they were fishing and while they were at sea fishing only this declaration of war and you know 
uh, the conflict started, but these fishing vessels are not aware of it. But anyhow, the US Navy captured these ships, these fishing boats, and uh, took them to uh, nearby, uh, you know, the sea, seaport. And they were kept uh, as uh, technically, uh, you know, uh, properties caught in the war. This is Cuba. And after this uh, Spanish war was over, it was over in about two years time, America captured so much of uh, Spanish territory, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, Manila, Philippines, right, uh, in the Pacific uh, Ocean, these islands are, you know, captured. So the war ended with the Spanish agreeing for peace with the US. And what about these fishing boats? Well, they were taken to, taken to Florida, uh, the nearby uh, state of uh, America, and they were to be auctioned off, actually they were auctioned off, and uh, you know, uh, the money taken by the US government as uh, you know the you know the price of war then uh, the owners of these fishing vessels took legal action against uh, uh, u.s government in the florida court florida is a state and lost the case they said that we were, were doing fishing it's an ancient custom even during the time of war we should be given the right to fish and that's what we were doing we were not aware of uh, you know um, america at war with spain uh, Cuba from where we came from was part of Spain but we didn't know about the war and we were basically victims of it and we want uh, you know the money back we want the compensation Florida US court refused it of course America was gung-ho they defeated the empire and helped them capture a lot of territory and the court simply said these are you know the prizes captured in the war these owners of the fishing boats took legal action, fought in the Supreme Court. What did they say? Fishing has been a centuries old tradition. Even during war, fishing was not disturbed because fishing was a primary source of nutrients uh, to the people. So warring countries, even they were at war against each other, they would not uh, disturb or harm fishing vessels. So by USA doing this, capturing our capturing two of us two of our boats has violated the international custom so we want uh, justice against it so of course at the time of the capture these fishing vessels were doing only fishing there was no evidence shown by the US Navy that these fishing vessels are used for anything else other than fishing So that was uh, the argument, right? And the US on the counter argument said, no, we followed the international law. We were uh, at war with Spain under the international custom. So uh, once the war is over, the captured assets uh, could be auctioned by the country that captured the assets. So that's what we did. But on the other hand, uh, the particular ship owners are telling, no, fishing was a custom our assets cannot be arrested, cannot be disturbed even during war. That has been there for centuries. This is the territory um, America captured after the Spanish War. See, all in 1898. Spain had no recourse, no defense against uh, the might of the American U.S. forces. So island after island, they lost. Within about two years, much of uh, territory earlier belonging to Spain fell into America. So that's how America created the own empire. Even today, most of these islands belong to um, America, like Hawaii, Johnston, Midway, Wake, Guam, still belongs to America. Philippines, of course, is independent. Samoa is independent. Panama is independent. Puerto Rico, Cuba is, of course, independent. So others still, America controls it, right? So all this territory, America got after the Spanish War. This is how the Supreme Court decision was. Six to three decisions. It's not. A, it was not a unanimous decision. It was a majority decision. And what did the U.S. Supreme Court said? Yes, fishing vessels have to be exempt from, yeah, capture as prices of war under the customary international law. And this has been the very first decision in the United States 
court's history of you know 1776 into this it was almost 120 years of history that the united states supreme court has accepted international law as part of their law customer international law as part of their law so, so it's the importance uh, that uh, this particular case is connected to right and this is what they said ancient usage among civilized nations beginning centuries ago and gradually ripening into the rule of international law what was it fishing rights has to be accepted under us law as well yes fishing was a key part of uh, human culture right especially uh, european nations their main source of nutrients was fishing so uh, fishing went undisturbed even during the worst of times because uh, you know the livelihood of the people the very survival of the people depended on it so the fishing fleets were never harmed so this is the history in 1403 king henry the 4th right and then the holy roman empire right uh, the decisions so this is the history and this has been the history that united states decided to follow supreme court so along with it came what the acceptance that uh, you know customary international law so you can't take one custom of international law and say okay um, we follow that so when you accept one custom of international law like this what happens us become right open to all the other international customs taken as customs after international law so it's a crucially important decision and it opened up the law of the sea yes uh, with regard to the fishing rights and it's a right that is uh, accepted under the international law because it has been accepted by one of the most powerful nations in the world so it has this ricochet effect on the world next one is another case we call it the lotus case it was a you know case between france and turkey uh, this is a particular ship involved lotus and again let's go for the decision first right we'll discuss the story later so the decision has been what yeah when a nation has its jurisdiction or law has a jurisdiction that means a particular physical boundary within which the law can be applied right but that law cannot be applied outside the territory right so the law of a nation has to be limited to the territory that the country controls that's the first principle of the lotus case right so jurisdiction is territorial it cannot be out applied by a state outside its territory and it's been practiced even to this date no country can use its law beyond its territory right so the problem here was how about uh, when something happened in the high seas what would be the scenario okay so uh, second principle in this particular case was yeah when you have law for yourself inside your own country you are free to set up your own laws no problem of course there are some limitations by international law like you know genocide uh, you know the crimes against humanity violation of human rights and all yes yeah we can't have local laws violating those things but other than that the country is completely free to set up whatever the law it wants within its jurisdiction right that's the second principle first principle what is it yeah your law has to be stuck inside your territory second principle up to you to set your law right within your territory whatever the law is of course there are certain controls under the international law and yeah this is uh, it's long reading uh, you know you don't have to read through unless you are a student of law into something big that's why i kept the content there it's a decision given by the uh, actually the international court of justice um with regard to this particular case in a, in a nutshell you know to get the highlighted area take a look you know you can set up your laws laws within the territory within your jurisdiction yeah 
and uh, when you uh, set up laws for your country inside your own territory you're free to set up your own laws um, but of course uh, some of the laws that you set for yourself within your country is subject to international law so that's what we summarized here so this is a long statement of the Supreme Court or other International Court of Justice in Hague so ship actually that was uh, at the center of this particular problem what's the problem in the high seas a French owned vessel Lotus uh, hit or the collided against a Turkish vessel Boscoat and the collision was such a heavy one that uh, the Turkish vessel right sank they were actually commercial vessels so the you know carrying people and goods right um, you know uh, eight people died they were all Turkish and uh, ten of them were saved actually um, uh, by the other ship the Lotus the French ship they were taken on board and they went they mean Lotus took the survivors to um, Turkey what did Turkey do they arrested the French uh, captain right master of the ship and he was taken to court and sentenced for 80 days in imprisonment and given a fine as well then the French government protested you can't arrest our people you can't uh, put them into prison right you know Lotus is a French ship so it's French territory so the demon right the French captain was inside this particular ship when the particular accident happened so he was inside the French territory a particular French ship so you can't arrest him uh, and take action so there was a dispute between Turkey and um, you know uh, France at that time so they took the matter to permanent court of the international justice we call it the uh, you know basically icj we call it today right international court of justice what did the court said we discuss a court decision first court simply said you know turkey has the right to take legal actions against demon court said and court said they did not violate the international law why take a look at it you know what happened was the French ship got entangled collided against a Turkish ship as a result of it the Turkish ship sank as a result of which nearly 10 people died so uh, the damage happened uh, to the Turkish territory that's a Turkish ship right because of action by someone inside the French territory that's a French ship so you know yes demon the French captain was inside uh, uh, you know the French uh, ship all the time but it's, it's his actions that can I mean cause the damage to uh, the Turkish ship that was a Turkish territory so they were inseparable the International Court of Justice stated so as a result yeah um, either France or Turkish uh, law right has the right to take legal action against uh, you know the French captain the court said but this was a decision but the decision was kind of somewhat changed later we'll discuss that later so what happened here yeah any prohibition to the legal actions by a state within its own territory must be found in international law so what Turkey did was not illegal under international law so it is okay collision was between the Turkish ship and the French ship as a result the Turkish ship was damaged and sunk and people died it was caused by the French ship so uh, the damage directly affected the Turkish ship so Turkey should have the right to take legal action against the French uh, master of the ship the captain the court said court agreed right so the Turkish uh, law has a right to take this action that is the idea of the International Court of Justice however the existing international law is somewhat different we have the Geneva Convention of the high seas 
signed in 1958 and of course we have the you know unclosed united nations convention of the law of the sea 1982 now under that remember that whenever there's a collision happening between two ships in the high seas now high seas don't belong to any country you know that okay so whenever you sail on the high seas what about the law well whatever the country that has registered the particular ship has the power to take action regarding conduct that happened inside that ship when that ship is in the high seas that's all so imagine uh, a sri lankan ship uh, getting uh, you know collided with a maldivian fishing boat or something so the maldivian boat comes under the maldivian law maldivian neeti sri lankan uh, fishing boat or whatever comes under sri lanka law and it happens in the high seas imagine these two nations uh, have the take have the power to take legal action but however considering the recent cases you know uh, imagine the recent uh, law is applied to this old law of a lotus case if that's be the case uh, french captain would be able to be would be taken to law under french law rather than the turkish law right because uh, it did not happen inside uh, uh, technically uh, french territory sorry the turkish territory it happened under the french territory the french ship so france would be the one that will be responsible for taking legal action not turkey so a decision made uh, by the international court of justice uh, several decades back has been somewhat changed now either flag state means normally if the culprit belongs to uh france yes french law if the culprit belong to turkey yeah turkish law so that has been the way uh, you know because of the change to the uh law uh they are after why is this particular case important because this particular case discussed for the first time of the law applicable in high seas particularly with regard to ship sailing because the only way the law uh, applies to high seas would be regarding ships right because there are no you know lands in the high seas right so this particular you know the lotus case as a first to determine yeah when two ships means two countries right colliding against one another what would be the how would be the law we tackle that so the international court of justice made a different decision to the current practice but uh, okay in recent times the law has been somewhat amended thanks to this uh, two united nations conventions right uh, you know with regard to uh, you know uh, the law of the sea right so that's a uh, uh, second case the lotus case um i hope uh, uh, you had a good understanding of both the cases these are highly crucial cases when you look at uh, you know the law of the sea catch you in another day